we can continue with our uh, discussion of yesterday um, let me just look at the first point I want to cover today okay which is that basically that we have covered it and I've given you a brief introduction so momentum versus mean reversion I hope everybody understands now what it is okay so these are very important to understand because these are fundamental approaches uh, basic philosophies okay uh, therefore you should uh, understand them very well and you should be able to identify any system as a momentum approach or a uh, mean reversion approach okay all right so if we take uh, the here it's a little easier um, so the 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 first thing i would like to say here is as far as the donkian system remember we've defined a basic breakout system as an n period looking at n period yeah do we have a mic we don't yeah okay yeah what is the difference between a momentum trader and a directional speculator so a directional a momentum trader would be one class of uh, uh, one one uh, category of directional speculator just like female students are one category of students okay so you can also have male students so therefore uh, th that's what I mean so essentially uh, that is one way to speculate being a momentum trader is one way to engage in directional speculation okay a directional speculator is anybody who requires a very significant movement in the price to like say for instance here if I look at this I look at the long term let me get the prices in as well today we are looking at slightly different um, let's look at the rates panel as well so it'll be more exciting for you okay right so if I look at this thing and if I make a bet that uh, at this point sterling is likely to drop uh, it has already risen pretty high uh, now it's and it's a long-term downtrend and this cable is going to this is called cable by the way okay so sterling USD in the spot foreign exchange markets is referred to even in forwards and other so sterling USD the currency pair this market is referred to as cable I already told you why right you remember that everyone's forgotten anyway it's not so important because the rate <laughs> is just this is just trivia actually this is just trivia because the rate used to be this is the most important because these two are the most important were the most important economies uh, in the early days and then uh, when the after the close of London trading this exchange rate which is so important used to be sent by undersea cable what was the closing in London that information used to be sent by undersea cable to New York so that's why the rate became known as cable okay so anyway so suppose I take a view that here cable is already now uh, the correction has risen sufficiently uh, high here now it's a, that's the end of the road for as far as the corrective rally is concerned now cable is going back down again I make a projection like this so remember for every kind of role you have in finance the CFO or whatever you a treasurer or any kind of asset manager okay every kind of role in finance you will be required to take a view on markets which means you'll have to look at a situation like this and decide does this rally from here does this continue higher or does this turn around and go lower lower you will have to take that view and there's no guaranteed uh, way I mean there's no guarantee that your view is going to be correct but you still have to take the view and make a bet on that view and then you might win or lose money so that's way so if I take a view here that this is going down and I look to sell it here I'm a directional speculator because I require a, a big directional movement in order to make money okay similarly if I bet on this continuing even then I'm a directional speculator okay and so if I bet like in this case it depends on so if, what trend you're looking at okay so if you're just looking at this so this momentum mean reversion again uh, just to further flesh out the answer to uh, uh, to Mayak's question okay uh, this if I'm only looking at this kind of a data range okay it looks like it's an uptrend if I'm only looking at this okay so here in this kind of an uptrend if I go short then what kind of trader am I momentum or mean reversion here if I go short okay let's look at an answer so what is a momentum trader is a trader what is the definition of a momentum trader it's a very common sense yeah yeah follows the trend who bets who looks at any current trend any current trend and bets and uh, bets that this trend is going to continue in the same direction okay so if I'm going short am I betting that it's going to continue in the same direction I'm doing the opposite if I'm going short I'm actually betting that this trend because you have to always be clear about the data range 
what data range are you looking at because this whole picture will change I'm only showing you a deliberately manipulated data range but if I show you the the fuller picture then suddenly now it doesn't look so bullish right you see a long downtrend and this looks like just a correction in the downtrend just like you had this corrective rally you had this corrective rally this one this one and they all didn't last and they eventually led you had this one and eventually it went down again okay so you see the big so it's very important to be to fix the data range that's why you see sometimes people talk in the markets they say that the dollar has go, has strengthened against the yen that statement has no meaning unless you specify the data range because here you can see see that uh, sterling has strengthened against the dollar for this data range but then if i change the data range then i can show you a different picture so the statements have no meaning unless you qualify it with the data range okay what period are you referring to but you will find in the in the markets and when you are watching business television people talk loosely all the time they don't talk in a highly specific manner i mean they don't talk in a manner that a computer would find acceptable so it's a good practice to train yourself to talk as if you're talking to a computer because it forces you to speak in a very precise manner okay and the way you speak my theory is that the way you speak it affects the way you think so if you if you talk loosely you you'll be thinking loosely very soon and then very soon you'll be an idiot okay because you're thinking loosely so therefore uh, you, it's very important to be very particular about the way you use words okay but when you're having a casual conversation with your friends going for a movie then you don't have to talk like that but we are talking in a business setting it's very important to be precise in the use of words okay all right so uh, coming back to the problem so this is obviously if i'm betting that this if i'm going short over here i need the market to drop in order to make money that's right that's clear so if the market is going to drop then it has to drop sub substantially for me to make money then eventually it's going to turn around and go back here somewhere so i'm not betting on the continuation of the trend i'm actually betting on the reversal of the trend right so that makes me a mean reversion trader okay so i'm a contrarian or a mean reversion trader with respect to this view with respect to this data range okay so therefore it's very important to fix the data range when you are taking a view okay so you may find that on the in the in the short term situation you may find like this may be a short term view okay and this may be what i was showing you earlier this may be a long term view if you are trading two systems okay if you are trading two systems which is always a good idea to trade in multiple time frames your longer term system is bearish okay but in the short term you are seeing a bit of a rally okay there is a corrective rally going on in the short term so you may decide even not to go short right now until the short term trend is also broken so you can see here that um, here this this particular low needs to break in order to neutralize the short term trend can you see that the short term uptrend that you see going on okay we can make it more colorful and make you uh, make you look at candlesticks okay so can you see here that uh, but actually that makes it harder to detect the highs and lows so we just go to the high low close bar so can you see that this low needs to break in order to neutralize the short term uptrend from here can you see that <coughs> everyone can see that yeah so you may actually combine the two views and actually decide that i won't go although my big picture view is bearish so the long term you can take your trading bias from the long term trend from the long term system which looks bearish but in the short term you would not be going sh uh, short until the short term uptrend has turned also turned negative because right now if you look at the short term trend there seems to be an uptrend okay it is looking positive but you can identify the point below which the short term trend will get neutralized which is this point here you can read off the values 122.08 can you see that yes. there the low figure that's how you should read the chart not from the this is the this is showing this chuk was getting confused about this yesterday and and before so this is all the stuff on the right hand panel the the price axis this is showing you where the cursor is okay but if you want to read the values you position you can see the low is over here you want to read the lowest low for what was the low, low low on that day what was the low on that day then you read the high lows at the bottom okay where they are showing you the reading of the cursor okay so 2208 so then you can actually set a plan that below 2208 i'm going to go short okay because then the short term trend also turns gets neutralized at least the short term uptrend gets neutralized okay and what do i have on the long term uh, system it's already bearish because the long term system is coming down okay so therefore i can afford to go down if you want to really look at long term we can see how to play with these charts we can make this 
GBP. Actually, we we don't have the. We're not interested in the French franc. Great British pound, and you can see how uh, the pound has. Can you see what enormous trends you get over the long term? This is from the 1960s, late 60s. This is the sterling against the yen. Can you see what kind of enormous trends? Think about Japanese exporters who are selling into the UK and think about how they've had to compete, how the currency keeps, uh, if the, so is this good for Toyota or bad for Toyota? This kind of trend, if they're selling into the UK, it's bad because their currency keeps strengthening against the British pound. So each British consumer has to spend more and more uh, pounds to buy that same car, which is produced, let's say, in Japan. Okay, so uh, British pound, and if we put US dollar here, okay, you can see the long term trend in the cable. Okay, and you can see where we are today. We are where we are today is somewhere here. Okay, so this is the longer term trend. If you really want to see the big picture, that also looks bearish, right? So, this is the kind of big picture you should look at. So, all you want to do is wait for this to break, and that's neutralize the short term uptrend, and then you start going with the trend. So, Garvey's answer is basically so that answer is not correct. This is actually a mean reversion trader if you're going short here, especially when, when the view is when I, all I'm showing you is this, this trend. I'm only showing you this trend here. You see an uptrend. So if you're going short here, you're a mean reversion trader. If you're going long here, you're a momentum trader. Okay? Because, uh, and again, if you go long here, your stop should be over here. Because if you're going long, that means you're a momentum trader. That means you're betting on the continuation of the uptrend. But if the market goes below this, it has neutralized the uptrend. Clear? You can see how you can trade in a what? Oh, okay, okay. Then let's make it colorful then. What color should we put? Okay, let's use the candlesticks. Is it visible now? A little bit better? Okay, so okay, maybe I should change the theme. Where's the theme? There should be a theme option. Okay, let's make it white. Does it make it better? No, it's not changing the background color. I must have changed. Uh, anyway, let's let's um, let's not worry about that. Um, if we reset chart to default, still doesn't change. Okay, so um, let me go to go me go back to my uh, thing. Okay. All right. So can you see this? Even if you go long, your stop should be over here. Yes, sir. Because if you're going long, means you're betting on the continuation of the uptrend. But if the market goes below this 2208 low, it would have destroyed the pattern of higher lows. It would have destroyed the pattern of higher lows. It would have neutralized the uptrend. So your assumption is invalidated. So you should be out of your position. Are you able to follow this logic? Okay. So okay. So this is uh, so momentum versus mean reversion. We have spent a little bit of time on this. Um, What's the time showing? Uh, 11. Uh, wow, well, we've already spent half an hour on this. Okay. Anyway, so let's go quickly. So, so why is the why is let's say think let's think of this. Let's say this we make as a. Um, so one of the points I was talking about is that you can also take a four-week system like the Donkian system, and you can convert it into a 20-day system. It is similar to the same idea because four weeks is 20 days because markets don't trade on Saturdays and Sundays. So four weeks is 20 days, but a 20 day system will be more sensitive than a four week system. You understand why? Because in a 20 day system, like if I'm trading on Friday, I take the last 20 days. Okay. If I'm take, trading on Friday, I take the last 20 days, which means this current weeks, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is correct, connect count. Okay, but if I'm trading it as a four week system, then I'm not taking any of the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday of this week because I'm only taking completed weeks. So I'm taking the last four weeks. Okay, so if you wanted to make that system more sensitive, you would convert it into a daily system. Okay, that's not always necessarily better, but if you wanted to do that, that's what you would do. Are you following what I'm saying? Same thing. Okay, so why is let's say why is the Donkian system a 
let's ignore this. Uh, let's try to show you. Um, let's assume that this eight hour business is actually a four week. Uh, this let's assume that this eight hours is actually weekly. Okay. So if the why is the Donkin system a momentum system? If you wanted to justify to yourself, why is it a momentum system? Because if you think about and why is it not a mean reversion system? So if you look at any, just just look at the beginning. Okay. Let's go back to our definition of a trend. We said the definition of a trend is we can actually pop this out and give you a better view. All right. Then we have to again go back here to show you only what we need to show you. Okay. All right. So here, as everyone can see this from the here. Okay. So you remember the definition of a trend, right? What is the definition of an uptrend? Higher highs and higher lows. Okay. So when we remember, uh, you remember we did a case in contracts under offer versus invitation to treat where uh, there was a telegram sent will you sell us bumper hull pen <laughs> telegraph lowest cash price so we said we, we uh, discussed the language lowest so if you are using the word lowest what are the minimum number of prices that you are contemplating three, three. three prices okay so now if we go back to that kind of thinking and we say higher highs and higher lows so if i'm using higher then what is the minimum number of highs and lows i'm contemplating two, two right so I just need two highs and two lows. If, if they follow this uh, condition of higher, then we can have an uptrend. Are you following what I'm getting at? Minimum what you need for an uptrend is just two highs and higher lows. Okay. So if we start from here, I see that there's a high here and then there's obviously a low here. Okay. And then there's another low over here. Okay. This is actually the low because if you look at the, the bar uh, length, okay, this is actually the low. We can uh, try to make this into a bar and try to collect, connect the rising color. If we make it like yellow, is it easier to see? Everything is difficult to see actually. Falling color, if we make it cyan. Okay, is it better? It's slightly better. Okay, so this is the first low. This is the second low. Can you see that? This is actually the low that you have to take because this is lower than any of these lows. Okay, so this is the second low. This is the first high, and this is the uh, the first low, and this is the second low. And after that, this is the high that we are looking at at the one, high of 121.06. So the moment this bar goes up like this, have we created a, a second higher high? Okay, we have created a higher high. We already have two lows where one low is higher than the previous low. So we have two lows and we have the moment this high is exceeded, we have a uh, higher high. Okay, so we have an uptrend. Okay, and if you can see here, we already have a, a breakout. Okay, we have a breakout. We have a signal for a breakout system. And if we assume that these are actually four week highs. Okay, if we assume that these are actually four week highs instead of eight hours, uh, then you can already see that at this point when it breaks out, you take one, two, three, four, five, it's many, many weeks. It's already breaking out of this place, okay, which is the one, two, three, four. These are the four. The moment it breaks out above this, it's already gone to a new high. You get a signal on the Donkin system, right? So essentially what we are seeing is, so what does the Donkin system go, go do here? Does it go long or short? No. It goes long, okay? So what is it doing? So why is it coming back to the question of how will you logically justify to yourself or someone else that the Donkin system is a momentum system and not a mean reversion system because a momentum system always tries always goes in the direction of the current trend right and a rever mean reversion system is the opposite it tries to fade the current trend okay so uh, therefore if you see here you have a new trend that is established a new uptrend that has just been established okay and the donkian system is going long okay so when a new uptrend is established it's going long which means it's betting on the uh, co continuation of the uptrend because it will make money only if the uptrend continues higher are you following okay so that's why this is actually so and if you reverse the logic for a short position the same logic will apply so you'll see whatever trend is being established or confirmed okay the donkian system goes in the direction of that because it's a breakout system okay so all breakout systems are momentum systems because they go in the direction of the trend that is being established 
by the breakout okay so this is basically a one type so donkin system is only one type of breakout system you can design your or your own breakout system by defining any category so maybe you you want to trade only in 8 hour in the 8 hour time frame Just, i'm giving you a very simple example so you would look at this and you would say okay we have this we have a low we have another low we have a high and the moment i get another high I'm not using a Donkian system. I'm just doing a general breakout system. Okay, on the eight hour chart. So the moment I have another new high, it establishes the uptrend because I have two highs and two lows. Both are higher. Okay. So then, whether the 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 later one is, later ones are higher, therefore I have an uptrend, and therefore I'm a momentum trader. Therefore I can go long because we have an establishment of an uptrend is this clear so you have a very simple system but at the same time it's a powerful system because it's based on market data and it is helping you to control risk the real quality of a system shows you that you can control risk obviously now once you have this kind of a high at this point once you go long your stop would be here your stop would be here just for the same reason that i'm saying if you go long here your stop has to be here so when you're going long your stop has to, has to be at the low below which the uptrend would be neutralized similarly if you're going short the stop has to be above the point where your downtrend would be neutralized this is clear so you can see how simple it is but it's actually very powerful don't be fooled by the simplicity don't think that it's a bad system because it's not complex enough you understand that human beings have a love of complexity do you understand that have you seen enough of people in your life in your short life so far have you seen enough of people to understand that people like more complex uh, things if you show them something very simple they will think that this is not good enough especially if you show them something complicated they like it but just because something is more complicated doesn't necessarily mean it's better in many cases that's actually very bad especially when you're looking at system design like these regression models that you have seen you've seen regression models that y is equal to a1x uh, uh, is equal to a plus b1x plus b2x uh, b, b1x1 plus b2x2 plus b3x3 so if you keep on adding these x's okay people think your then your r square is going up if you keep on adding more and more x's but actually that's not a good system from a trading system point of view that system is, so it's actually counterintuitive okay you think that your r square is going up but you are actually doing what is called curve fitting but human beings like to do that they like to see more complex systems they think it's better but in many cases it's actually wrong okay so are you have you got the logic of this now that basically why is this a momentum system okay so uh the next point we want to cover is okay so another very important thing that you can see here is that i've i've given you a hint of this earlier which is uh, that maybe we don't have to have it as a 14 uh, thing we can cover more material here if we have it as 12 or even if we have it as Can you still read? Okay, that's another problem. You may not be able to read. Can you read at the back, Puneet? Can you read? Okay, good. So the second point we want to cover is this idea that um, the the Donkian uses the. Uh, you should notice that the Donkian does not. So if you go back to your, uh, I've already given you a warning about this earlier that this part is not so important that's why i highlighted loss remember so when you have a decision we are going back to our decision problems just to recap you're familiar with all these decision problems we don't worry so much about the first three because they're usually decided by the investor but you need to be conscious that these are decision problems the buy sell is quite important most of finance theory de deals with this uh, we'll come back to this later right now you're doing it using ta okay for the because we don't have time to teach you fa right now okay now in the case of options there are some extra decision problems which we will cover them later when we start doing options but you should be conscious there will be some extra decision problems in the case of options okay but then we have the other problem of entry price which we have discussed fairly extensively what should be your entry price and then there's the exit price with the loss and exit price with profit should be showing in red sorry i've reversed it exit price with loss should be in red and i don't know why i put green there but exit price with profit should be in green okay 
All right. I don't know if you can still read it. Yeah, you can still read it. Okay. So green looks good on that kind of screen. Yes, sir. So maybe I should use green uh, for more for the charts. Okay. So now notice one thing. Yesterday we did a short part on uh, what kind of decision problems are covered by the Donkian system, yeah. and we covered exit price on loss only. Okay. Because what is the Donkian system doing? Let's go back to our trade. Okay. Where if we go if we go along here, we have this other one here. Okay. So if we go along here. Okay, so uh, let's say here if we take this, uh, we go along at this point on the Donkian system, and what is my exit price? What is my stop? The stop is going to be the four week low actually. So it will be one, two, three, four. So in this case, the Donkian system will take this as the stop. Okay, so but you so you have this stop now. Let's say uh, initially you have this stop. So let's say now the market has gone up and come up to here. Okay. So even now, if you see the Donkian system will use a stop of four week low. So one, two, three, four. So it'll use this as the stop. Okay. But you notice that the Donkian system does not have what is called a targeted take profit order. You understand what a targeted take profit order is? A targeted take profit order is this, where I'm, let's say we don't need to just increase this. You understand what a take profit order is? If you go back to your bracket orders, yes, if you go back to your bracket orders, which we looked at on the IBTWS, which I'm not loading now because we, um, my memory, uh, my the RAM capacity may not be able to handle the two software as, as long as the uh, along with the video recording software. So I'm not loading the TWS now. But if you remember, we had bracket orders. We had a concept of bracket orders. So what were you doing when you're doing a bracket order? You were actually uh, even here you could do it. You could actually be going long at this point. Okay putting in an order to go long at this point by a, a limit order okay and putting in a stop at this point and in this for this purpose we would put in this here okay we put in a buy order to go and go long over here and then we put in a stop over here and at the same time i feel this has a chance to go to 124 and i want to take profit at 124 is this clear what is happening here now i'll have to deduct marks for sg1 and others why are you talking while the class is going on? If you have a problem, you ask me, but you don't talk while the class is going on. SG1. What? Okay. What? Okay, so no talking. I don't want to hear any talking. If you have any problem, you just raise your hands. You need to go out or something. You just raise your hands. So there should be no talking in the class. We are all discussing important points which we are, which many of you have not yet mastered. So I don't know why people are actually. Um, so if you go here and if you place an order, okay. If you are going planning to go long here, you place a limit order at 22.50. You place a stop loss order at 122.01. Okay, and not 122.01, actually 122.08 as you can read off here. Below this low, you place a stop, okay, uh, and this is your stop trigger. This is your limit entry order, okay. Notice this is a limit order because the market is here right now and I'm planning to buy, buy it at here, at this level. Therefore, I'm trying to buy at a favorable price, more favorable than the current market. Therefore, it's a limit buy order, okay. And simultaneously, I place a bracket order. The lower part of the bracket is here, the stop. And and I also place a take profit order at 24. Okay, so this one, when you place a bracket order it, with along with a limit entry order, you have a limit in, limit order for entry over here. You have a stop order for exit at a loss. Here you have a stop order for exit at a loss. Are you following? Yes. And you also have another order to take profit. This is a targeted take profit order. Targeted because you're targeting 124. You're saying that this price movement is going to take us to 124. Notice you're making a projection about the market movement, the future market movement. You're making a projection and you're saying this is going to take us to 124 and it's not going to go below this. Okay. So that's why you leave. But then you're leaving a targeted take profit order because you want to take profit you've heard this expression before okay so one these are actually layman's uh, expressions because in the system language we use stop order and we use limit order okay so but in in layman's terms we say this is for taking profit so it's a take profit order and this is for stopping losses so it's a stop loss order okay so limit entry order the bracket order bracketing comes from the lower part of the bracket is here the stop order to sell 
okay and then there's a limit order to sell at 24 this is the targeted take profit order is this clear why is this a limit order because the current market is it's a sell order and the current market is 2275 and my sell order is at 24 so it's more favorable than the current market so it's an order to transact at a price more favorable selling is better at 124 it's more favorable to sell at 124 than at 12270 are you following yeah okay so i'll just i'll just come to you so if this is a limit order are you following so this is what we did in a bracket order if you go back and practice bracket orders on tws you'll see that that is what it is the moment you ask the tws to place a bracket order it to attach bracket orders when you're entering a limit order for entry the system is so smart it automatically knows that one of them will be a limit order and one of them will be a stop order if you notice that in the system the system does that right because the system is smart enough so this is a target this is what i'm calling a targeted take profit order okay so you are using a targeted take profit order to exit from your uh, position at a profit by placing a limit order in this case it's a long position so the limit order is a limit sell order or uh, sell limit order is this clear is everyone following okay yes Parul, what is your question no no at this point we are not discussing uh, i mean for the purposes of my discussion of the uh, of the limit order and and uh, of the targeted take profit order and trying to show you the donkey system okay so, uh, so so okay repeat your question i'm not able to follow for the see if you're trading the donkey system so what i'm trying to show you is that the donkey the principle i'm trying to the point i'm trying to illustrate here in this second point that we are covering today is that the donkey system notice that the donkey system so first i showed you what a targeted take profit order is okay so then i'm trying to show you that understand that the donkey system does not use targeted take profit orders okay so now come back with your question yes what are you saying suppose uh, my mark, uh, the price at the which i will enter is uh, 1260 no, if you are using the Donkian system today, the market price, this is the current week, let's say. So we don't count this week. No. According to the Donkian system, if you are using, your stock will have to be one week, two week, three week, four week. So your low, your stock will have to be at this low. But sir, 2209. The thing is, I'm asking if the four weeks before, that is below the uh, market price, what if it is more than the market price? No, it can never be more because see the Donkian system. Okay, it in this case is that we are talking about a position that you went long, where you went long initially. Okay, because you got this high breakout over here. Okay, because we were not looking at this other information in the data range. Okay, you're always going to be constrained by some data range or the other, which you choose as your system. Okay, your time frame and the and the system because you're always going to be looking at some chart and some chart means there's always going to be some data range you can make it big or you make it small or whatever it is but there's always going to be i remember one of the features of a chart of any chart is that there is a data range it may be 30 year chart it may be 30 year a 30 year data range or it may be a 10 day data range but the moment you look at a chart you're automatically looking at some defined data range right so in this data range you have gone long so in this case there cannot this what you are saying that the high the because what is the rule in the donkey system the rule is to go long when you have a four week high that's why you went long here are you following okay now what is the rule the rule is go long, go short if you have a four week low right buy when there's a four week high sell when there's a four week low okay so we are not discussing I, at this point to complete i don't i'm avoiding complicating the situation i'm not discussing the concept of pyramiding here you already understand what pyramiding is pyramiding means adding to your position when the market is moving in your favor okay as a professional money manager you will have to have a, a very clear pyramiding strategy because otherwise you will not be able to make much money if you just take one position you will not be able to make much money you have to have an idea of pyramiding okay so when the market is moving in your favor you have to add to your positions so that you can really pile on with the control risk the risk will remain the same but the position size will keep on increasing okay so that's where when when the if you really catch a big move you can make a lot of money 
yeah. right? So what is the rule of the dog? We are not discussing pyramiding at this point. We are discussing only one position. Okay, so you have a bullish view. When the donkey makes a new high, four week high, you go long here. And the rule is, let's assume that for the sake of argument, because we want to discuss it with respect to this part over here. So the rule is that you have to sell if there is a four week low. Okay, so for the sake of argument, we are going to assume that between here and here, there never was a break below the previous four week low. So the sake of argument, in fact, if you look at the chart, there may be some breaks. Okay, but let's assume that there was no break because we want to discuss it at this point of time. Are you okay so far? Okay, so, so therefore now your rule at all times is you have to follow the last four weeks, last four completed weeks. And you have to follow the low of the last four completed weeks. So you always observe the low, low of the last four completed weeks and you see if the market drops below that, only then you get out of your long position. So the rule is already defined in such a way because the low of the last four weeks will always be, def uh, you know, unless the market breaks below this, then the that will always be lower than the current market. It can't be higher than the current market. The high of the previous four weeks can be higher than the current market, but the low will not. I mean, unless it's already broken and then you've already had to ex you've got your signal to exit. Is this clear? Are you following? Yes. Okay. So the point I'm trying to illustrate here is that notice that this system, because we said in our discussion of decision problems, we actually said that this is a decision problem. When should I exit with a profit? Okay. And that's why you have things like bracket orders. You have things like bracket orders for those traders who want to use targeted take profit orders. You can also use a tar you can separately enter a limit sell order, but the bracket order captures the idea uh, in a in a uh, in a integrated way. So that's why you have bracketed. Uh, that's why you have targeted take profit orders. It is a separate decision problem. Are you clear about that? That when you look at it uh, at first glance, it is actually one of the decision problems because if you take a position and you go long, okay, and then uh, or you go long or you go short, one of the problems that you're going to, the two things can happen, either it moves against you or it moves in your favor. If it moves against you, at some point you have to decide when do I cut my losses and exit from this position. So that is the exit at loss uh, decision problem, okay, exit price with loss. What should be my exit price with the loss? And then there's of course the other decision problem is if it moves in your favor at what point should I take my profit, right? Many times you'll notice on business television when analysts come on they will say that we, we recommend that investors take profit at these levels. You might have heard these kinds of statements, okay? So what they're saying is that okay if you were already long from before at this point you can sell and do this basically. What they're saying is they're talking about this one, sorry not this. They're talking about this last decision problem. So it is it is a decision problem, okay? But there are uh, this decision problem can be solved either directly or indirectly, okay? So what we are doing is so so when you are using a bracket order with a which in the case of a long position, a bracket order the targeted take profit will be a limit sell order, right? Because you have long, gone long here, you are going long here with a limit order. Let's say it gets filled, you have a stop here, and you have a limit sell targeted take profit at 124. Okay, that is a direct way to solve that decision problem of exit price with profit. Are you following? Okay, now notice what Donkian is doing is as we are taking the specific example of the Donkian system, but it is true for all breakouts uh, for uh, for most breakout systems, which you can configure a breakout system with a targeted take profit. But if you're talking about a, a pure kind of there are many trend following systems, which will do what the Donkian system is doing. Look at what the Donkian system is doing. It is never using targeted take profits. Can you see that? Because see the system went long at this level, say 121.07. Now I'm highlighting the high, so we have to look at this thing here. You can also look at the high uh, over here. Are you following? The system went long at 121.07. Now the stop loss is the stop for the system is at 122.05, right? Because it's a four week low. One, two, three, four. So the low is 122.09. Sorry, not 05, but 09. I'm now reading the exact value. Now, 05 was the cursor value which is not exact. Are you following what I'm doing? Yes. So in a, a position where you have gone long at 121.07, 
and now you are going to uh, exit if, if the market drops below this 121 uh, 122.09 then you will be stopped out of your position so you will be exiting at 122.09 your entry was at 121.09 uh, 121.07 and you are exiting at 122.09 so is this a profit or a loss who is saying loss you bought you bought cable you bought cable when we say you bought cable means you bought here what is the base currency GBP is the base currency okay so when we say when we refer to any market and we say I bought dollar yen or I refer to the cable market and I say I bought cable that means I'm referring to the base asset if you flip it around uh, if you say I bought sugar okay that means that you bought sugar and you sold Indian rupees in the Indian market okay so 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 you're always this bought I went long this market means I went long cable I went long sterling essentially if I say I went long cable that means I went long the base currency okay okay so I went long at 12107 and now I uh, 12107 uh, and I'm selling off at 12209 so is this a profit or a loss it's a profit is everyone clear now it's a profit may have you're convinced not convinced okay let's be clear it may be a little confusing because we are talking about buying selling this that so I am buying cable at 12107 let's assume that I let's let's look at the exact price here what is the exact high 12106 okay so it's a little bit more than 06 if you look at the fifth decimal it's a pipette but that we let's ignore it for the moment because I, I find it hard to read it also it's so small okay so let's forget about that uh, superscript and so 12106 let's just assume there's no slippage we buy at 12106 okay so I buy cable at 12106 which means when I'm going long sterling one sterling is buying 1.2106 US dollars this is clear okay now when I'm selling sterling I'm selling at 122 this is the low actually because this is our four week low so I'm selling at 122.09 so when I'm selling sterling one sterling is now buying 122.09 US dollars so am I making money or not I'm making money because whatever I bought is now worth more in US dollar terms so if I do this trade for 1 million sterling what will show in my account is 1 million sterling in at this point 1 million sterling in when I go long here 1 million sterling in and out will be US dollars amount of 1.1 million into 1.2106 right that will go out in US dollar terms sterling 1 million will come in when I sell it then sterling 1 million will go out when I'm selling at this point sterling 1 million will go out and what will come in is US dollars equivalent of 1 million into 12209 right so that US dollars is more inflow than what was the outflow the first time around because this amount is more now because selling is stronger now so I will get more US dollars is everyone following we should have we could have done it by calculation on the spreadsheet but now it should be fairly clear so my sterling account is square because 1 million in 1 million out sterling account is square so that will typically how be how if you if you are transacting in base asset terms that's how the PNL is generated okay the base asset there will be always two accounts if you are trading in sugar you will have a sugar account and you will have a rupee account so when you are buying say if you buy 10 quintals of sugar and then you sell 10 quintals of sugar then your sugar account is square okay because 10 in and 10 out but your rupee account will not be square typically it will either show a profit or loss depending on what you did so the profit and loss shows up in the rupee account in this case in the sugar example of the Indian market and in this case the profit and loss can you is everyone clear now there is a profit yes what not convincing people are not giving convincing responses is this clear because sterling is stronger now so the base uh, the uh, sterling sterling base currency amounts in which you traded those accounts will square off 1 million in 1 million out and the dollar account will not be square it will show either a profit or loss but in this case it will show a profit because what went out was uh, the dollars uh, 1 million into 1.2106 that many dollars but what is coming in is 1 million into 1.2209 so those dollars are more on the second leg so the dollar amount with dollar account will show a surplus that surplus is your profit is this clear okay so now the point I'm trying to show you is that in this Donkian system right now the stop lies at 122.09 because the Donkian rule is previous four weeks low 
exit at previous four weeks low sell if there's a new four week low okay and here one week two week three week four week this is here low is 122.09 is everyone following so far okay so what we are saying is that yes clear parul you're clear okay so what we are saying is that 122.09 even if you sell out even if the market let's assume that the market crashes right now and breaks through 122.09 so then you have to sell your long position in cable okay now so this is actually a stop order but that's why i said from the very beginning that stop loss is a layman's uh, is layman's language the technical language is always a stop order so you can see that your position is stopped out at this price okay at 122.09 but is it a loss it's not a loss because your long position at 121.09 is it at your long at this level and you're selling at this level so it's not a loss even visually you can see this it's not a loss so that's why we should be careful about the use of the stop loss term other than in a very layman's uh, should always whenever you're using terms like stop loss and take profit you should always clarify that these are loose terms okay these are not technical system terminology okay system uses only terms like limit orders stop orders market orders okay those kind of terms this is that's why we call it a stop order and not a stop loss order okay although it it is actually stopping you out of your position there is no loss okay and it's a stop order because the current market is here and you're placing a sell order below the current market below the current market is less favorable for selling than current market that's why it's a stop order yes why is everybody looking blank by now the definitions of these orders should be very clear in your head yes. the stop order is anything sell or buy less favorable than the current market limit order is anything sell or buy more favorable than the current market and market order is equal to the current market yes where my where my uh, cursor is right now 122 no no why one we don't count the current week we are assuming that this adr is already a week we are, we are just assuming this for the sake of argument okay this adr is a week we are assuming don't take the current week <coughs> this one 2 3 4 so see the last go to the last uh, take the lowest take first map out the last four week period 1 2 3 4 and what is the lowest low in this four week period it's here 2209 is this clear okay so what we are showing you is that uh, what we have hopefully established by now is that the donkian system does not use any targeted take profit orders it is not using limit orders can you see that this stop system does not use the other beauty of the system is that it uses only stop orders can you see that it is not using market orders it is not using limit orders it is using only stop orders entry is also by stop orders exit is by stop orders okay and it is not using any targeted take profit orders in the form of limit orders to buy or sell and that's why i'm saying that the donkian system is solving this particular exit price with profit problem not directly but indirectly you can already see why it's not solving directly directly means <coughs> okay what is happening again some noise is coming from this side who is talking here why don't we just separate the two of you you go and sit behind varma the sg1 you go and sit behind varma okay um all right so um are you following what i mean by directly solving the problem versus indirectly solving the problem indirectly maybe we'll come to later but do you realize that if i say if i'm going to use a targeted take profit order that is if i buy it here or if i let's just let's say look at here look at this if i buy it here and i place a stop over here but i place a targeted take profit at 124 that is a direct way of solving this decision problem because i do need to decide at what point i'm going to get out if i have a profit and i'm directly solving that by using a limit sell order from before this is clear so that's called a targeted take profit order if i place a 24 124 sell order here limit sell that's a targeted take profit order okay for the position that i take on here let's say at market itself okay but here in the donkian system we don't use targeted take profit orders so we are solving this exit price with profit problem in an indirect way and how do we solve it 
we can already see how we solve it we went long here and we are exiting here so we are making a profit we went long the base asset in this market remember when the the other rules of charts which we covered when the chart is going up you should be able to logically work it backwards in your mind but mechanically for quick decisions you should have these thumb rules if the chart is going up that means the base asset is appreciating or depreciating appreciating if the chart is going up that means the base asset is appreciating because normally your scales are going up normally the right hand scale of the price is going up like this okay you can also have some inverted scale, but those are very rare sometimes to show something you might have a but normally the scales are all going up so if the big chart is going up means one base asset is now worth more and more of the terms asset so therefore the base asset is appreciating so this is the basic rule of thumb this is a basic logic but every time you don't have time to go through all this logic so you should just remember as a thumb rule that if the chart is going up means base asset is appreciating so here we have made a profit but we did not capture this profit by using a targeted limit order targeted take profit order but we captured it by using a stop order to follow the market but what was happening to our stop order when we went long the initial stop order was one two three four well this was here okay the initial stop level was here four weeks low but now as the market kept moving forward we kept on moving the stop and the market was moving in our favor so the stop kept going higher that four week low level has kept on going higher okay so now we have actually placed a stop at this level okay so basically the stop has not remained constant it has been moving up along with the market okay because we are long so it's moving in our favor that's moving in our favor and the market is moving in our favor and the stop is also being increased in this case to move along with the market the stop is actually following the market are you following in that sense you're able to see what i'm saying the stop is in a way following the market it's tracking the market as the market moves higher the stop also moves higher yes people are not very convinced okay so this is what we call a trailing stop okay so the uh, the um, donkin system uses uh, trailing yeah this is a much smaller the term we use in the market is called a trailing stop okay so what is a trailing stop you understand what trailing is we say that uh, you say bolt is leading the race and the second runner is trailing him right that means he's behind him okay so in that sense trailing stop means the stop is trailing what the trailing is trailing the market the stop is trailing the market so it is behind the market yes but it is also there is also a sense when you use the word trailing that it is also following the market like there's some kind of constant distance between the two kind of not not always constant but something like that so it is trailing the market means it is following the market with some kind of more or less uh, not not a hugely fluctuating distance so it is following the market reasonably closely so that's why we call it a trailing stop this stop which was initially over here okay then we kept on moving it up as we moved it up we would call it a trailing stop because the stop is trailing the market are you following so this is again market lingo that you need to be aware of okay so trailing stop so typically if you meet a trader who does not use limit orders for who, who trades let's say the donkey system so he will tell you that i don't use so the lingo that you have to be able to understand is he will say i don't use targeted take profit orders I, instead i use trailing stops so are you following what i'm saying here you can see already what the donkey system is doing okay so it's not that the donkey system does not have a method to capture profits to lock in profits it has already managed to lock in profits from here to here right it has managed to lock in profits from here to here so it's not that there's no, no way to lock in profits as the market keeps on moving in your favor now if the market keeps on rising the stock will also keep rising so as the market is moving in your favor it is capturing more and more of that profit okay it's just that it's not doing it with a targeted take profit order in the form of a limit order but it is using a trailing stop order are you following now the concept of trailing stop okay so now can you see that also we can say therefore that when you are using a trailing stop okay um, okay so stop loss we want to put in this like this because these are actually layman's terms but we are putting them here okay and let me just okay and here we want to say
So one of the ways to, uh, sorry, now this should be here, is, okay, are you following what I'm writing here? That the decision problem of what and where to exit with a profit, the decision problem which you have a clear decision problem that needs to be in, uh, addressed, okay, is where do I exit with a profit that can be either solved directly by using a limit a targeted take profit order okay as you were doing in the case of bracket orders or it can be solved like the Donkin system solves it by using trailing stops are you able to see this so the trailing stop is actually uh, basically once the position moves into a profit okay when the stop loss is above your entry price in the case of a long and below your entry price in the case of a long of a, uh, of a short okay once the market has moved sufficiently in your favor the trailing stop actually although it's a stop order it's not a stop loss order it's actually a stop profit it's basically protecting your profits okay and it's capturing more and more profit as the market keeps moving in your favor okay all right okay so is everyone clear so far yes. so the use of trailing stops. so what you've learned it is another thing that the decision problem of where to exit at a profit is solved uh, by can be solved indirectly also by using trailing stops is this clear okay so this is actually a very good idea because i think it basically reduces effectively what you have done is through one methodology because there is still a stop order you had you notice that the methodology has not changed in the donkian system what are they saying just take the previous four weeks low so even when you have initially when you put on the position obviously if it broke up and then immediately broke down you would have lost money because you would have broken below the four week low there you would have lost money okay but the rule was always the same they're not changing the rule just take the previous four weeks low and exit at that point so here it leads to a loss but as the market moves in your favor when you use the exact same rule you get a profit you're actually capturing some profit okay so the point is that the rule has not changed so they're they're actually eliminating effectively they are by solving this decision problem indirectly they are actually taking the rule for this one they are taking the decision because see if you say for what is this this is also a decision problem where should i exit at a loss and these guys in the donkin rule the donkin system is giving you a solution for that decision problem and is telling you that exit at the four weeks low now you may or may not agree with that rule but it is a rule it is a way to it is an objective way to solve the decision problem okay you may or may not make money with it or whatever but it is a way to solve the decision problem instead of sitting and scratching your head forever right so uh, it is a rule and then you notice that they are not changing they don't have a separate rule for this they don't have a separate rule for this decision problem so they have basically eliminated one decision problem effectively they are using the same rule that they use for this to solve this problem also this problem has to be solved always because the problem exists and it has to be solved either you solve it directly or you solve it indirectly okay so you cannot get away from the solving the problem but what these guys are doing is it's an elegant system because they are not coming up with a, they have one rule for solving both the problems are you able to follow okay so it's actually not uh, again don't think that this is a bad thing because it, it simplifies the this so can you see that the trading system is much simpler here it is simpler because you don't have a separate rule for this you don't have a separate rule for this are you able to follow this i just had a discussion about simplicity and complexity earlier okay so when you are evaluating a system like the donkey system you should actually give that system good uh, good marks for this trick where they have eliminated one rule that is a simpler system is always a better system generally okay unless it's a stupid system like it has no way of capturing the profit okay uh, you know it has no kind of no way of under it is not tuned into the market reality in some way okay unless there's some fundamental problem but by and large you should always choose simplicity over complexity okay that is the golden rule and that is not a that's not an intuitively obvious it's a counterintuitive statement and when you look at a lot of these courses that are being peddled in the market okay uh, a lot of these courses which are there from independent bodies like times quo and all these they will always try to teach you more and more and more complicated methods because they're actually playing on this human weakness because human beings think oh it's so complicated it must be good you know but actually that is stupid especially in the realm of markets and trading systems the more simple and crude your i always actually use the word crude 
it crude is, a, is not a, is a pejorative word we normally say crude means we, it's, it's in a negative sense but i actually use it because a crude and simple system is much better so one of the good things about this kind of a system it's a very crude and simple system buy on a four week high sell on a four week low so it's so simple okay and it's actually not because if you follow the risk management rules you will still be do you will still do okay with the system if the market is not trending strongly you may have a long long, long run of losses but the system will you will not uh, get killed by this system because there is a risk management rule okay there's a and you have to follow it strictly so understand this so so understand now we are talking a little bit about a system design kind of perspective you need to have this perspective because all of these are elements of a trading system okay what is a trading system is just a, a set of rules which helps you to solve all these decision problems you understand these decision problems exist all these problems exist okay you have seen it now first hand in your project and you have worked in your summer internships when you are running an investment fund you will have to solve all these problems and in the case of options we have not gone into the discussion there are some additional problems like strike price uh, tenor of the option three month option or six month option those additional problems we'll deal with later but this is pretty much if you're not using options okay if you're doing spot equities or if you're doing futures trading uh, you're pretty much in future also you have a month choice but let's take the example of spot instruments okay which is uh, uh, quite a lot of those uh, foreign exchange uh, equities okay these are your decision problems and these are all uh, this is basically the exhaustive list of decision problems right these are all the decision problems you need to take uh, you need to solve so you have to have a way to solve all these a trading system is nothing but so that's the donkian system will be a trading system if you can add some other rules regarding risk management donkian does not solve this problem remember when we discussed yesterday the donkian system solves the buy sell problem it solves the entry price problem and it solves both both the exit price problems but it does not solve this of course it will be given by the investor these first three and these but the donkey system does not solve this problem it has no solution for this decision problem this is also an important problem so you have to this that's why i said this comes out of your risk analysis you will have a separate risk analysis module okay which hopefully we'll address i don't think we'll have time to address today um but this is the risk analysis problem that will so so understand this so try to lo start looking at things from this decision problem point of view you notice that entire curriculum of your finance electives is grounded mainly in these decision problems okay so it's very different from how it's normally taught in other business schools which is based on textbooks which need not for they are not anchored in this uh, kind of framework that for us basically if it's not directly or indirectly relevant to a decision problem solution we don't waste time on it okay so uh, now we have to solve this problem so understand this concept of trailing stop okay so the other thing that i would cover today is um, okay so is this clear now that th this I idea is also important that you have what you have learned so far today through the donkey system is that you do not need to directly you do not need to always directly solve this problem you can also solve it indirectly and if you do that in a way you have a much simpler system because one decision you have eliminated one rule okay so remember a trading system is just a, a set of objective rules for solving each of these decision problems okay okay so your trading system also has to have a set of rules uh, this will be almost like a subroutine it will have to have a set of rules for solving this last one how should i derive my position size that will also have to be part of your trading system so when you're looking at a trading system it's just a bunch of rules so a bunch of objective rules for solving these decision problems preferably objective sometimes it may be subjective a little bit especially on the buy sell uh, part but uh, preferably objective rules uh, to solve each of these decision problems and if you have a trading system which has one less rule then it is less complex to that extent okay and as we said less complex is always better as a general principle okay there may be some so this is an important thing to understand okay good so we have 10 minutes we can cover one more element uh, at least one more uh, element of the coverage that we have planned for today okay market if that you already have this is all happening in your notes only so everything is being written down so again there's another important order that you should understand which is the market if touched order okay which you can read about on the interactive brokers page okay uh, i've given you the link this is also basically taken okay 
Right. So what do we have in a market if touched order? Actually, I should have had my TWS open. But let's try and understand. It's a slightly complicated order. I think I have the... Um, Just read this and see. Just read this and uh, see what you understand. It's based on a very specific view. So understand that all orders are based on views. That also you should be clear about. When do you use a market order? When you're afraid that the market is going to run away from you immediately. So therefore, you don't want to wait for a limit order. You straight away buy or sell using a market order. So what is it? It's based on a view. Your decision to use a market order is based on your view that if I don't act now, I will not get a better price. I better sell it or buy it right now because the market is going to run away from me. Okay, so all orders, decisions to use a particular type of order is based on a view. Okay, this you can see, you can just, you have the link already. So you can just read this. Uh, uh, basically, this this is already there and this all this stuff I'm writing now is in, in your notes actually. I'm writing it in the notes available to you. Okay, so this we are covering market if touched orders. So it's a peculiar kind of, I just wanted to show you one. So another type of order which we are not going to cover because I don't recommend the use of these orders, but you can read it for yourself. You should have this basic knowledge stop limit orders you can study it on your own okay uh, for um, I'll just put this thing uh, this is not uh, I would not recommend the use of these orders this is for your interview prep and all these things okay just understand but this is not an advisable order because if the problem is stop limit orders is that your order may you may never get taken out of your uh, position which is very risky so the, if there is a gapping action in the market you may be stuck with a position at a very unfavorable level and you have never not been taken out okay of your position so this is a, un, uh, I don't advise the use of these orders but you should still know about them as a finance student okay so uh, that you study on your own market if touched understand this uh, logic from the interactive brokers um so, but they're still in use hmm? but they're still being used yeah Stop they're them. still being used in the sense yeah some people may use it and the system provides you the option of to using it okay but i don't recommend using it okay i want to give you a strong uh, negative feedback on these orders. but you have to know what it is you should know how it works and i and uh, the reason i'm not uh, recommending the use of these orders is these are used as an alternative to stop orders these are used as an alternative to stop orders but i don't recommend the use of stop limit orders because it can create because because it's, i think from a risk management perspective it's bad and risk management is the heart of everything okay so therefore my advice to you is strongly not to use the order but you have you as a finance student you still have to know what this order is and the reason i don't recommend the use is because it may leave you with your your you may be stranded with your position the objective of the stop order it's a this is an alternative to stop orders okay but this is i strongly recommend the use of stop orders rather than stop limit orders because the stop limit order can effectively defeat the purpose of the stop order okay which is to take you out of your position when the things are not going in your favor okay so that's why you read up on your own for on this you should know what a stop limit order is and you should be able to explain why based on what i've told you that you'll understand when you study it yourself you understand why i said that that you'll understand the structure of the stop limit order it can effectively leave you uh, a, with with uh, you'll be stranded with your position okay in the sense you could have you have a long here you would like to get out here but if you instead of placing a stop if you place a stop limit if there's massive gapping action in the market then like you have very often in the cable market something happens on brexit talks and stuff then the market really gaps down to 2020 120 and then it keeps on going lower and then it goes to 119.50 and you're still long left you're still left long because you didn't leave a stop order you have to stop limit order and it's never taken you it didn't take you out of your position because of the gapping action so now you're really badly stuck you're losing a huge amount of money on one position which should not happen it breaks the basic uh, rule of risk management the basic rule of risk management is that you should your each trade should not cost you a lot of money it should be very 
very small percentage of your total risk capital. So you can afford to lose many, many, many times in a row and still be okay. So if you buy, so if you break that, so that's why I don't recommend the use of stop limit orders. So you should study it on your own with, uh, while remembering my strong negative recommendation against the use of stop limit orders, I recommend the use of stop orders. These are alternatives actually, stops or stop limits. Okay, so quickly market if touched orders. Let's see, we have to worry about Garvit getting restless. <laughs> so, uh, I hope you guys don't mind. I keep pulling people's legs. So, I hope you don't mind. So, okay, good. Uh, okay, so we still have three minutes. Let's, let's, let's at least cover market if touched orders. Okay, then we have to cover a lot of other important things also. Okay, market if touched orders. Uh, this is in your notes. Okay, so we already had that. Uh, we had already looked at it. Okay, so understand that everything, uh, all order types, decision to use order types is based on a few okay market order based on a view actually you may not realize it but when you think about it it's based on a view why did you use a market order instead of a limit order because you had a particular kind of view okay and it's all the time so here market if touched orders what is happening is let me explain it to you visually and then you study it for yourself okay and you can replay the video see let's say I'm long sterling here okay okay so let's say I'm long sterling here okay I'm long I've gone long at market and I placed a stop order here now in case in in the case of suppose my projection is my market price projection is that there is a sharp there's a chance of a sharp rally to 125 but once the market hits 125 there's something special about the 125 level I feel quite certain that it will hit 125 but after hitting 125 the market is unlikely to go higher and in fact there's a high risk of a sharp fall okay so I'm long over here I have a projection that this market is going 125 but after 125 uh, there's a risk of a very sharp fall in the market okay so base if I have this guy so you notice how specific the view is okay so another aspect about technical trading is that allows you to take it gives you an environment for taking very specific views so in this case what I do is I place a market if touched sell order okay and in this case the sell order if you notice here how many parameters we can see it on the other side how many parameters does it have still one parameter just like a stop order okay it's got a trigger level okay so market if touched when you place a market if touched order the system will ask you what is that trigger level okay so when you say market if let's say that I give the example of 125 okay I, I want to my view is it goes to 125 and then shop fall sharply okay so I want to stay long as long as it's going up to 125 up until the point it hits 125 but then what I do is I because I feel that then it can stop uh, fall sharply so what I do is I place a market if touch and since I'm long okay it's a take profit order this is an alternative to a take profit order okay it's an alternative to a limit sell order here okay I could have placed a limit sell order at 125 but the reason I'm not doing it is that I'm not sure where I will be in the queue because when I'm placing a limit sell order at 125, maybe Puneet has also placed a limit sell order. Maybe he's ahead in the queue. His order gets execution uh, executed. And after that, the market falls. Because anyway, I feel after hitting 125, it will crash. Okay. So I don't want to be taking the risk of being a little bit behind in the queue. And then if I said, see, because if I tell the system limit sell at 125, it will not sell even at 1.249999. It won't sell because it's not 125. Okay. Are you following the logic of the limit sell order? It will not sell. So if I'm a little behind in the queue, I may get left behind. And then I, the market has crashed after that and I'm still holding my long position. So I don't want that. So what I do is I place a market if touch sell order and there's one parameter the system will ask for. That will be the trigger level. That will be the 125. I'll have to tell this. So what does the system do with the market if touched? Or, uh, in this case, when I sell a market if when I place a market if touched sell order with a trigger of 125, the system is watching that uh, it's like again it's a conditional market order, just like a stop order. It's a conditional stop market order, but the system is watching 125. Okay, the moment the system hits 125, uh, well, the moment the market hits 125, the system will immediately transmit a market sell order. Are you following so it's market if touched which means in this case it's market if 125 touched okay so market if the trigger level is touched so in this case it's market it's market if 125 is touched 
so I don't want to sell it unless one because I'm fairly sure 125 will be touched but at this point I don't want to limit order because there should be a there could be a flurry of action so the moment 125 is touched I want to get out at market because my view is now complete okay are you following yes. how precise the view is so what are the other thing you need to understand what is the difference between now obviously as understood because two minutes have passed okay the only other difference you need to understand the difference between a stop see notice that the difference between a stop order and a market if touched order okay in both cases I'm long sterling in this case I'm long sterling the stop sell order is at 122 it's below the market but so the trick and both have one parameter each stop order has one parameter market if touched has one parameter but the difference is that in the case of the stop order the mark the parameter level the trigger level is below the market yeah I am a long I have a long position in cable so I have a stop, sell cable stop order here to protect my losses to cap my losses I also have a take profit kind of order with a market if touched order but the trigger of the market if touched order is above the market in this case can you see this you understand so if somebody asks you what is the difference between a stop order and a market if touched order you can give you can just concoct an example like this just draw a chart the trigger level for the market if touched order will be on the other side of the market compared to the stop order so if you're long the stop order trigger has to be below the market right yes but if you are uh, but the MIT trigger will be above the market this is clear so try to understand this order now we are now there in the video so we can you can go now you have your I have already touched your lunch like with the market if touched order I have lunch if touched order okay anybody have any technical questions no technical questions tomorrow we have two classes so this, this one is your sheet right yeah so in this 24 7 my you have a problem present you have are you and are you beyond four yes sir you're beyond four no i'm not beyond then why are you bothering me i already wanted what i gave you the instruction anybody has a technical question not attendance you have a technical question okay no, we don't say cyclicity, we say cyclicality. Okay. So in a in a in a broader sense you can say that the Donkin system is consistent with the idea of cyclicality because what is the component, what are the two components of a cycle? There's an uptrend and a downtrend. So the the idea of trends is consistent with the idea of cyclicality because trends are contained within cycles. Okay. So in that sense, to the extent that the Donkin system is a trend following system, it is in a way consistent with the idea of cyclicality. Because but there's a slight difference because normally when we talk about the idealized cycle the two lows are at the same level like a sine curve when you're talking about a sine curve kind of cycle the two lows are at the same level the two highs are at the same level price level wise but in the market you don't see those kind of exact lows like you can see here for instance uh, this kind of cyclicality if we look at uh, interest rates we try to if we look at this, so I showed you this as a uh, 1962 onwards, 1953 onwards. So I showed you this chart of the 10 year US Treasury. Uh, this is a real life, now you see. Now you see cyclicality, okay, and this is not a, I didn't draw it artificially. It's not exactly the same actually, it's not exactly the same because it seems to have gone below this, these levels right now but it's quite similar okay it's very similar to a it's a, you know very similar to an idealized side curve okay but obviously what the Donkin system is trying to capture is not so much the cyclicality as such in the larger sense but the journey to the top of the cycle and the journey back down you can use a Donkin system both ways you can use if these are like four week if this is a four week high you have a low you have a higher low you have a high you have a higher high the moment it goes up and makes a new high you can buy so it's actually capturing the trend part of the cycle you can use it to capture both uptrends and downtrends it's clear? 
So we'll discuss, we already discussed this, remember? In, in when I gave you guidance for your project, we already discussed this when we looked at things like yeah, the idea when we looked at the uh, total uh, market capital. Yeah, so we, we looked at some of those, right? So I, tomorrow I'm going to discuss the some of the other ways to do it. One percent is an arbitrary level that I told you, okay, where we discussed all this stuff here. Now you can get a. Uh, so we discussed all this at one percent. We did these calculations, right? So this is one way of doing it, but this one percent is arbitrarily derived. So I'm going to show you another way of doing it in a more precise way. Yeah, you can have lots of doubt, no worry. That's why I didn't shut the video. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I wouldn't even call it the normal way. I don't think you should think of it as a normal way. What is more normal? See, what is more normal is that the active markets for most currency pairs will include the USD. First. But no, no, don't say first. If I say will include the USD, that is not as strong a statement as it will be first. You realize that when you say it will be first, that's a very strong statement. But if I say that it will include the USD, then it's not such a strong statement. It could be first or it could be second. In both cases, it's included. Okay. So I think what you should think about is actually that it will. The USD, most of the currency, major currency pairs, they will include the USD. Like these are the major currency pairs. This, you see, the USD is included, but it is not always the first. So in many of these, so that is the more correct way to think about it. The US dollar is the most important currency in the world. So in most of the actively traded currency pairs, it will include the US dollar. Okay, you can see a more. Uh, because I used to differentiate it as when the USD is uh, the term that's it, then uh, I call it a cable. No, 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 it's not like, that's not how you should, cable is just the sterling dollar USD uh, exchange rate is called cable, okay? but historically this is a matter of convention, so here you have to remember it as a matter of convention, it's like, see, on the in the US they drive on the right hand side of the road, in India we drive on the left hand side of the road, now it doesn't mean that they are right and we are wrong, it's just a way of, uh, it's just a convention. Okay? So they have a system like that and we have a system based on the left hand side of the world. So this is just, a, so these are just conventions that conventionally the US dollar say against the yen has been quoted as the, do, with the dollar as base currency. But when it comes to against the euro or against the sterling or against Aussie or against Kiwi, okay, all of these cases the convention is to have the other currency as the base currency. It's just a convention. All these are cables or only GBP? No, 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 only GBP. Only GBP USD. Only the GBP, the sterling US dollar exchange rate, only that is called cable. Because in the early days of the foreign exchange market, these were the two most important countries. Because Britain was the declining power, but still very powerful, and the US was the rising power. These two are the most important economies. So the exchange rate was very important. And used to be sent by undersea cable after the closing of uh, London trading to New York. Okay. So that's why it's called okay. cable. So only that, yeah, it's just a name. Okay. It's a, like, like we can just say, okay, Ritesh, we, from today we will call Ritesh A1. <laughs> so it's just a convention. Why did we call it A1? Why not B1, C1, whatever? Which is the convention? We just decided. Okay. Is it clear? Okay, good. Yes, yours is technical. Yours is all the absence matters. Five absence matters. Let me one second. One minute, one minute. Let me close.